He's got a little toggle switch instead of the press buttons. Glory to God. Now I can reach out and feel like a click, I, I'm on. <laughs> click, I'm off. Instead of, am I on, guys? Is it green? <laughs> nope, the handheld's in the, in the frequency range that's not going to become obsolete, which we were glad to find that out. Yeah, the handheld is in, is in a, is in a uh, it purchased at a point that it was already outside that range, which they were going to do this. We're good there until they decide to sell that range. And don't, don't think probably that the, uh, these companies don't have their hand in that to make sure they have to buy all new equipment. I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything, but how could I even think such a thing? Because yeah, everybody had new equipment. And they got it on sale. All right. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. So, at this time, we're going to receive our Sunday morning tithe and offering. And if you want to do the special offering, we're going to do it at the same time. We'll give a special offering toward that. Just, you can either take two envelopes and mark them separately, or you can put it on the same envelope. You can put two checks in the same envelope and then put other on there and how much that is for that. We're, just going, we're going to cover it. Amen? Yeah. How many believe you got the 350 with no problem? Yeah, no problem. Amen. Glory to God. And uh, get it covered and get it taken care of because uh, we were not going to buy it until we had to. We had to. There's just you know, no choice. We can't keep recording with bad signal. Are we back alive? Welcome, everybody, back to Faith and Victory Church. Hallelujah. We're glad to have you back. Everybody reshare because it, it just got, you know, got lost. And so we had to re, re, redo it. So uh, just reshare it and say, hey, I'm back out here. Amen. Like it. Do something. Let everybody know we're here. Glory to God. All righty. Everybody got your offering envelopes ready? Anybody need anything else? Hallelujah. All right. Let's, Father, in the name of Jesus, we have the tithe, the offering, the special offering. We thank you for the cost of the new, the new uh, set is covered. Thank you for the uh, needs of truth being met. And they walk in the land in the full supply and overflow in the name of Jesus. And everyone agree with that by saying amen. amen. Glory to God. Go ahead and receive that ushers. Uh, usher. Hallelujah. Brother Benny and I. Brother Benny didn't want to be in Hawaii. He doesn't like to go. His wife wants to go, so he takes his wife just in the hotel room. I'm like, what? <laughs> he, he just, he don't like to go. So, well, Brother Benny, me and Jane will go for you. <laughs> we'll be more than happy to, uh, we'll be more than glad to go out there. Yeah, I'll take it for the team, yeah. He flies for free, by the way. It's the airline, so he didn't cost anything to fly out there. I think his wife flies for 60 bucks or something. <laughs> yeah, Hawaii. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, don't forget Wednesday night Bible study, and uh, you, you'll be blessed by coming out to Wednesday night Bible study. And uh, get out of the house. Oh, yeah, get out of the house and get fed some word. Amen. Glory to God. That's a good time. You know, come early. Go over. You got a Starbucks if you like Starbucks coffee. There's a McDonald's if you want McDonald's coffee. Um, there's an IHOP if you want some good old institutional coffee. <laughs> right over here at Wendover, all right? Um, you come early. You need to get coffee and come to church. So the bathroom, everybody get coffee and come to church. All right? A good time to be, come out in the middle of the week and get fed the Word of God. Amen? Preschool Children's Church, you guys are dismissed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go ahead and get our Bibles out. 61st Psalm. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Glory to God. Again, we're praying before church services. We're asking people, if you can, get here early. Help us get set up. Uh, the quicker the equipment and other things set up, the quicker they can get practicing, getting ready. Again, we don't have a 
situation as we did before we had our own place to uh, be able to really meet and practice um, or come early come early to church you know we used to they could come early to church and, and there they could practice because everything was set up you just walked in and started practicing and uh, praise the Lord can you say amen, amen. all right Psalm 61, verses 1 through 4 says, Hear my cry, O God, and tend unto my prayer. For from the end of the earth I will cry unto thee with my heart. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Hallelujah. The psalmist says here that he's crying unto God to attend to him, to hear him. When his heart is overwhelmed, I think everybody encounters times and seasons in their life that they can become overwhelmed. Can you say, help me, Jesus? All right? So that's the truth, or amen, or you know, uh, help me, Jesus, or whatever else you can come up with. Ouch. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, we, we all can face circumstances that are overwhelming. Wow, oh, my faith, man, I never face it. Well, just give me a stinking break. That's right. I've had people, you know, people go, uh, I've never had any trouble. I've just got faith in God. You're lying. Or you ain't been saved in five seconds. You ain't had time to face any trouble. The Bible even tells us in the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And then it goes on, let's all the armor of God. And then it says, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Now, we, we've said this before. One translation says it this way, having fought the battle till the end, remain on the battlefield ready to do battle again. Okay? And so, um, there are battles in life. Fight the good fight of faith. Well, the fight in the good fight of faith, I'm just resting. You're resting from your abilities and your efforts to win the battle. But you're fighting a fight. You're standing your ground. The weapons of our war, you got you to speak the word. you got to have the whole armor of God. When you read Ephesians chapter 6, you're putting on the breastplate of righteousness, you know, the, the uh, shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, the, the, the belt of truth, amen, feet of the preparation of the gospel of peace. That is a weaponry. He didn't give you a cot. Some of you are going to sit there and think about it for a minute. Well, all you do is rest. They'd have entered into faith, they've entered into rest, but read what Paul's talking about. I believe he was a rip off. Read what Paul talks about when he's talking about faith and works, not being in your labors, fighting the battle in your ability. You're resting from that. But you are not resting from being active and pursuing the victory by faith. Amen. So you get this idea that people say that the idea that of faith is you just lay down and do nothing. God's got it. And we love those songs. God's got it. Dun, 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 dun. God's got it. Dun, dun. I mean, we love, you know, and he does. But our cooperation with God and our connection with God and connection with the victory is found, as 1 John 5, 4 says, that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith, is a proactive part of the believer's walk. So to, to deny yourself, to put your head in the sand like an ostrich and say, drop kick me Satan through the goalpost of life, all the while believing that you're going to get supernatural answers while you're not uh, participating actively by faith is foolishness. Oh, you're in the works. I am not in the works. 
not works of the flesh. But I am working faith. If a man comes to thee, and thou say, be clothed and be filled and send them away. What, what, James, what was James talking about? He's talking about the foolishness of just not doing something. And James went on and said this. He said, show me thy faith without thy works. I'll show you my faith by my works. Now, people, people, the argument has always been that Paul and James disagree. Further, can, can, nothing can be further than from the truth. The phraseology that James is using is in reference, is, is in reference to corresponding actions. Paul's talking about doing the works of the law. In other words, I'm going to obtain righteousness because I brought two turtle doves. I'm going to obtain righteousness because I, I didn't walk a half a mile on the Sabbath. You know, in other words, and you got to see, you got to see that the aim of what Paul is talking about is you are not achieving salvation by earning it. But as a believer, you live in this world. There is a devil. There are demons. There are principalities and powers and mights and dominions and rulers of the darkness of this world that are arrayed against you and bring evil days against you and come against your life. Now, you're not going to earn your righteousness because you gave $5 in the offering. You can't buy your healing. Are you here? You gone home. So, the mis we, we're so shallow in our approach to Scripture. And people give us narratives from the pulpit oftentimes that makes the coffers ring. When, when the coffer rings, a soul from purgatory springs. You know, they, they believe they could buy people out of purgatory. That was an old saying back in the mid, mid, uh, uh, dark ages. When the coffer rings, a soul from purgatory springs. In other words, you could buy them out. See? And so Paul's writings, when he deals with, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in here. We have to understand that these narratives that we get in the body of Christ, and, I, and listen, us word of faith charismatic people can come up with some of the looniest stuff. Amen. Brother Bill? I was just waiting for you to help support me here on that statement. I wasn't saying you're one of them. I was one of them. Hallelujah. So it's not a matter I don't believe in faith. I believe in faith. I believe in biblical prosperity. I believe in divine healing. I believe in the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. I believe they operate in the church today. But this idea we get that because we're born again, we're under grace, we live by faith, we're the righteousness of God, that we're never going to have any trouble. Dad, heck, you used to say it. People miss it. Some folks think they're going through life on flowery beds of ease. Nothing can be further from the truth. Think the blessings of God are going to drop on them like ripe cherries off a tree. And you get people get mad at you. Well, they are. I'm under grace. Oh, shut up. And read your Bible. And not just the part you want to read. You're going to have to deal with the things of fighting the good fight of faith. Amen. You're going to have to deal with God's going to prosper you no matter what I do. Oh, really? Well, a New Testament writer called Paul said, He that sows sparingly reaps sparingly. He that sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his own heart. God gives seed to the sower, bread to the eater, multiplies your seed sown. And increases the fruits of your righteousness. Amen. The master himself, the head of the church, the second person of the Godhead. Amen. He who was and is and is to come. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Y'all hear? Who are we talking about? The Lord Jesus Christ himself said, give. And it shall be given unto you. That's not works. That's obedience. Amen? Jesus suffered and was obedient to God even to the death of the cross. Then he reaped. 
the harvest for the heart of the Father. Can you say amen? So what I'm saying is you're going to face challenges. You're going to face circumstances in life. You're going to be arrayed against by the enemy. And to think you won't because you're a word of faith, charismatic Christian is setting yourself up for the fall. Because the devil's going to put your feet where your head was two seconds before one day. And you're going to be down there drowning going, I'm not upside down in water. I'm not upside down in water. I'm not upside down in water. All the while drowning. We even get confession wrong sometimes. A lot of the time. We confess what we're, what's not going on instead of confessing what the Word says. Did you notice? I had a starting place. I really did. Did you ever notice the Bible said that Abraham, talking about, talking about God, makes reference, and then you know, over there in Romans, up in the fourth chapter where we're talking, getting into Abraham, talking about Abraham, then God says God makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Yeah. Now, that's Weymouth. King James says, you know, who calls things just be not as though they were. Okay? King Jimmy calls it, says, be not, things that which be not as though they were. Of whom, you know, whom he quickened, even the dead, he called those things which be not as though they were. The Weymouth says, which makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Did you notice it does not say, which calls those things that be as though they were not? Are you here? You're going home. He didn't call those things that be as though they were not. He called those things that are not as though they were. There's a difference. One is denial, the other's faith. I'm not sick. I'm not. No, 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 no. You're calling which be as though it were not. Instead of calling which is not as though it were, I am the healed of the Lord. I believe that I received my healing. 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by stripes I was healed. If I was healed, then I am healed. Amen. I side in with the Word of God. The Word of God is true. Body, you side in with the Word of God. Amen. Well, I'm summoning which is not as though it was. I'm speaking faith to change the circumstance. I'm not denying what's there. We make confessions that are not biblical. Amen. I've got a story to tell, folks, folks. And then Brother Bill's got a story to tell. Janie's got a story to tell. We're still on going with my toe here, but I'm telling you, uh, the, the doctors were going to cut that rascal off. I've talked to both doctors. He went to the hospital to make clear he wanted to cut He thought he needed to cut it off. Finally, like, a couple weeks ago, I asked my doctor, the podiatrist, I said, um, did you think I was keeping my toe? He said, nope. And he, he said, my gut feeling was you were not going to be able to keep it. That was his gut feeling. His gut, you know, said, he said, most people, in your case, don't keep their toe. He said, but you're not most people. Amen. Well, it had nothing to do with Ed. It had to do with the Word of God. Now, let me say this. I was not foolish. I just got faith in God. It's not, I'm not losing my, my toes healed in Jesus name. I'm, now I did what they told me to do. I was on antibiotics in intravenous for six weeks, twice a day. My sugar was high. I did everything. My sugars looked back down to normal. They, I was, you know, I had to do everything they said to do because you know, high glucose in your bloodstream inhibits healing. It's, it's, it's counterproductive to you. That's why most people don't get it because they won't, they won't do what they need to do. I did everything I was supposed to do. In the natural. But I was putting my faith in God to heal. And every visit to the podiatrist, I get, this, I get this statement. You just keep proving the pundits wrong. Yes. And he's, he's on my side. He's just, <laughs> you know, keep doing what you're doing. Don't back off. Just keep doing what you're doing. 
Got it, Doc. You know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Now, but my faith is not in what I'm doing. My faith is Jesus is my healer. I told my body, it's got to line up with the Word of God. Body's got to line up with the Word of God. I'm healed. I'm whole from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. Whole. Whole. Jesus bore my sickness and carried my diseases. He took my wounds. He took my injuries. Hallelujah. I'm healed of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So I'm not running around. I'm not walk stomping in mud puddles with my bare foot because I'm healed. I'm not going to be foolish and stupid. Amen. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Now, I can fit my foot in a shoe, but I'm not wearing it because it's hot and sweaty. You don't want bacteria trying to grow around this still open area. You, you wouldn't believe the difference in now and what it was. I mean, I, I, I could probably make you sick showing you pictures. When your toe is split open with a hole down into the bone, I mean, it looked like a flayed of steak and then a hole. We couldn't, it was dark. So it was so deep. You, your light won't even get in there. There's a big hole in there. Okay? That's all, it's all closed up and it's, just, it's, it's growing up to the top to finish off the, the, outside, the outer layer of skin and the layer of skin to completely close up. Like I said, 0. 0.72 centimeters, square centimeters. Now, the first time we, met, we got a measurement, that was six weeks ago. It was, six, it was 4.8. We don't even know what it was before that because we, we didn't get the numbers back then. All right? So it was big. It was square centimeters, not, not you know, that's, it was nasty. But you see, the journey of faith has been doing what we're supposed to do and believe in God. Believe in God is foremost. You can't go around and not follow any laws of prosperity and expect to be rich or to be blessed financially. God's just going to bless me because I'm under grace. That, it doesn't work that way. Now, and we set ourselves up because then we get overwhelmed. Some people, and then what happens then usually is they get disillusioned and quit. I tried that faith stuff and it didn't work. You, know, you just didn't listen to the right people. You didn't get the right information to live by faith. You didn't get the right uh, stuff that would help you overcome. You got a pie and sky sermon that somebody gave you that, that you know, you bought their tape series because you were going to get rich next week. How many remember the uh, old uh, tape series on how to invest in, in property and stuff? You're going to get rich. And the guy, and the guy that was going, you know, selling you on how to, his techniques of getting rich through real estate was selling his tape, 12 tape, tape series for 400 bucks a piece. Talk 12 hours, put up on 50 cents a piece cassette tapes and a $2 binder, sold it for 400. He won't get rich off of real estate. He was getting rich off telling you how to get rich on real estate. Hello. I want everybody to be able to know you found a gig. Amen. Now, when we get the right information, the psalmist here said, when my heart is overwhelmed, what do I do when it comes in like a flood? What do I do when everything in life is arrayed against me? And it looks like, you know, Brother Hay, you used to say, live or die, sink or swim, go over, go under. I'm going to live. <clears throat> I'm going to live by faith. I'm going to do this, you know, whatever. He said sometimes it looked like you did it all. There's been times it looked like you were going to sink. There's times it looked like you were going under. Amen? It looked like you, were, looked like you weren't going to make it. But see, when you live by faith, when you face those things and the overwhelming odds come against you, the person of faith has an answer. The person of faith has a confession. The, not, not just saying something because you read it out of a book, but you have a confession that declares in the midst of un insurmountable circumstances. When the enemy has raised himself against you with everything and you look out there and you think, oh my God, and you feel like the prophet's servant. Remember? There is one in Israel who knows what you say in your secret chamber. And he tells the king. And he says, I'm going to go take care of this. And sends his whole army out. The prophet walks out in the morning with his servant. And uh, he's going, oh, we're in trouble. 
And he said, don't worry about it, son. There's more to be with us than be with them. Yeah. And the, prophet, the servant looked over and went, one, two. One, two, three, four, five. Boss, I just got to five. They're double us already. Finally, he says, open his eyes. And he saw the host of the armies of the Lord and came round about them. Glory to God. See, the eye of faith, when you're living by faith, when those circumstances show up, what do you do? You go to the rock that is higher than I. When the circumstances of life are arrayed against you and your heart tries to become overwhelmed and the overwhelming circumstances say you're defeated, you can't win, you can't go over, this is the end. The cry of faith is I'm the head and not the tail. I live above and not, and not beneath. I'm going over and not under glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, it may have looked like you were going under, and it may have looked like you were going to sink, and it may have looked like you weren't going to win. But hallelujah, that when you gird up yourself and you begin to sing with David, I can run through a troop and leap over a wall. Glory to God, because the hand of the Lord is upon me. Glory to God. You can win that battle. And the psalmist recognized that when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Take me to the place where there is victory in Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Where I know that I know that I know that I have the victory because greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. The, we, the word there, overwhelmed, means to be feeble, to faint, to turn aside. We've all been tempted. I'll never forget that doctor walking in my room and telling me, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, this is pretty bad, but you know, they can fix this. And he walks in, I mean, the first time I see this doctor, and he goes, well, if I'm going to take this off, What? I mean, I won't even, I won't even think about getting that off. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. Like, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, give me some stuff, you know, fix me up here. He turns, and the nurse is there and says, well, don't let him eat after a certain time because he's probably going into surgery in the morning. So I'll wait to hear what the podiatrist has to say, but uh, this is most likely coming off. You mean, you mean the, the, the tissue that doesn't look good, you're taking that off? No, the, the toe. No oh, idea. When we were doing an MRI, sent me down for an MRI, and you know, comes back, and of course, you know, it's, it's uh, not definitive, but they think it's in the bone, which is, you know, that's because they can spread the other bone, they can go through your bones, and you can go, they have to cut, cut the foot off. I mean, where they were was not going to be good. I mean, going hack, hack and chop, and they might just keep going. And so by the time the podiatrist got there, I looked at him and said, Doc, I'm committed to keeping my toe. They won't, what do you think? It's, I'm committed. I'll do everything you tell me to do. Absolutely. And I said, I'm going to do my side. I know, my, I know how to do the spiritual side. You do your part. But I'm committed to keeping the toe. That's right. Got some running, shouting, dancing. Hallelujah. Everybody, listen, listen. And then the doctor comes back after two weeks, the, 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 the infectious guy, and goes, uh, oh, actually, he said, well, 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 okay, after you talk to the podiatrist, okay, we'll give you the, or, the uh, IV antibiotics and see how that works. He says, but you got to keep in the back of your mind, we're probably coming back here to cut it off. I keep my toe. I didn't, I didn't get in his face. I'm going to be a testimony. This is going to be a testimony how God heals. You're just going to be wrong. I haven't had to do that. Now, I have told him in the process, you know, I believe in God. I'm not, I don't make them look stupid. I don't tell them they're an idiot. I, I, don't, I don't bind what you say in Jesus' name. I don't receive it. Are you here? Thank you for your, 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 your viewpoint. Thank you for what you think. But I'm committed to keep my toe. I'm keeping my toe. 
in Jesus' name. And I call it healed and whole. Went back two weeks after the hospital with that doctor. He said, well, it is getting better. Probably going to have to cut the tip of it off. So you still have to cut the tip off, which would be way better than cutting it off the knuckle, but still have a funky looking toe down there. You know, the end of it cut off like a you know, stub down there, but not, you know, still keep your balance and stuff. And, you know, which some people go, oh, that would be great. Thank you. Go back two weeks later. Oh, it's getting better. I mean, it's, it's, uh, you're not out of the woods, but it's, you know, he stopped talking about cutting anything off. That, that's off the table now. The last time I saw him, well, as soon as this finishes closing up, we'll take you off the antibiotics. Because it won't be needed anymore. Like, so, now, he's, he's not talking about cutting anything off. He's talking about when it finishes. Now, I've made it clear with everybody, without being whatever, that I'm believing God. My faith in God. Doing what you guys tell me to do. And all I get is you proved everybody wrong so far. Well, that's because... I'm not calling those things just be as though they were not. I'm calling those things just be not as though they were. I'm believing God. I'm trusting God. I'm calling on God. I'm declaring the word of God. Amen. I could probably get up and quote Brother Hagin's Healing Belongs to Us tape series verbatim. Because since October the 20, 31st or whatever it is, every night, all night long, on my iPod, on my little iStation, that plays all night long. It just loops. I keep waking up to make my confession. It's amazing how I keep waking up when the confession's going. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 24, by stripes I was healed. If it was healed, then I am healed. Amen? Jesus bore my sickness and carried my diseases. Amen? I, lie, I believe the Word of God. The Word of God's true. I line up with the Word of God. Body, you line up with the Word of God. Amen? Sickness, disease, wounds, injuries, leave now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I wake, I wake up making that confession in the middle of the night. And I'm healed, have my toe. And the doctor's view was most people aren't like me. No. Most people aren't believing God. They're praying, asking if it be your will or, you know, and they keep right on going and doing what they're doing. They're not making any adjustments in life. They're not com you got to be committed to live the life of faith. And to do everything you're supposed to do and then believe God for everything else to take place. Amen? Amen? That's not works. I said that is not the works of the flesh. There's wisdom in that. People want to be prosperous. They think they're going to prosper. Because it doesn't work that way. There are laws of prosperity. Amen. You have to do it. You're going to win battles when the enemy comes in against you like a flood. The Spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. But I am telling you, you're going to have to be in tune with the Holy Ghost. He might tell you to do something. One of the things I remember we, we, we talked with Brother Bill about and prayed about and, 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 or at least with Belinda to Bill, was wisdom for the doctors. See, the Holy Ghost will actually lead you to pray certain things to get the right answers to stuff. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. Are you here? But then they found, they figured, they, they, they finally, somebody figured it out, and as soon as they figured it out and changed certain things, everything changed. The great physician knew what, this, what, what would fix it. Why, did, why didn't he just heal him automatically and him just get up and walk out of there? <clears throat> why did Paul tell Timothy to drink a little wine for his stomach's sake for his often infirmity, infirmities? Just, a little, just a, a little wine. He didn't say drink a, the white wine with this meat or the red wine with that meat. He said drink a little for your, off, your stomach's sake for your often infirmities. Y'all hear you going home. It was medicinal. It wasn't social drinking. As many Christians now want to, you know, get into. Oh, I, but I don't think there's anything wrong with drinking a glass of Chardonnay with this particular uh, dish. 
You go to certain restaurants, they'll tell you what wine to drink with your dessert. Are you kidding me? I want to taste the chocolate. Yeah. Larry's holding up the coffee. I want my coffee wine. Yeah. The nectar of the coffee bean. Yeah, I'll tell you what wine I want with, with chocolate dessert. A glass of milk. Hello. Amen. Why did Jesus rub spit in the guy's eyes with dirt and then tell him to go wash it? The Lord will guide us. Hello? Sometimes he does things, you know, just does them instantly. Sometimes they're healed as they go. It begins and they amend. Sometimes it's instant. Hello? But you still do your part. Just because somebody got healed instantly and they don't need anymore, if you're wearing Coke bottle glasses and you didn't get that, you, do, you need to let, just believe God and let them get better as they get better. It can be in a process. It can be instant. But if it's not instant, you better not be walking around without your glasses on wrecking people. Look, Mr. Magoo, I'm healed. Y'all ever see Mr. Magoo? Cartoons, then they did, it. Then, then, uh, then they did a, um, a, a live action with uh, Leslie something. Nelson, Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. He did a really good job of being Mr. Magoo. Didn't have the voice of uh, back, back us or back. Yeah. But still, he did a good job. And you're riding around like Mr. Magoo wrecking folks because you're healed. Why well, don't you just get where you can't, where, they, where it gets where you can't use your glasses because they're getting better and better. It's just you know, stomping them and then you can't even get home. Wow. And I'm just warming up. Hallelujah. So, when our heart is overwhelmed, to be feeble, to be faint, to turn aside. The path of least resistance is to quit. If you haven't built yourself in faith, but have built yourself in hyperbole, you'll quit. What do you mean hyperbole? I'll just lay down and rest. I don't do anything. I'm, you know, you're going to have to stand and fight your fight of faith. You're going to have to get out the sword of the Spirit, and you're going to have to go after the enemy with everything you got from the Word of God that's on the inside of you to win. You're going to have to speak what the Word says because you believe it and you know it and you've lived it and it's yours. Yeah. Instead of going, now what am I supposed to say when this happens? Uh, uh, brother so-and-so, what, what's that confession we're supposed to make if we're, if we're doing this? Honey, that's like being in the middle of the battlefield and you got an you got a automatic weapon given to you by the military and you literally got next to you, and you're going, now, how do I fire this thing? What do you mean, how do you fire it? Well, I don't know how to fire this thing. You know, pull the trigger. You know, whatever you have to do to, to, to initially lock it, get it ready. Pull the whatever that is back and get it ready. I, I, I'm not a firearm person, but I know this. If... Uh, if I'm going into battle, I want to know how to use it before I get there. <laughs> and another thing they would do is they would lock these guys in a dark in a, in a warehouse, close the door. It was absolute dark in there, and they had to break their weapon down and put it back together in 60 seconds. Why? Because if you're on the battlefield, you don't have street lights. As a matter of fact, you don't want light at night because you don't want them to know where you are. Hello. And you can't say, put your flashlight on to try to figure out how to put your weapon back together. Because you know what's going to happen? 50 or 60 machine guns on the other side are going to be pointed right at that light. And there's going to be stuff going all over the place. And the light will go out because they'll take you out. You can't wait until you're in the middle of a faith or a battle from the enemy to try to figure out how to live by faith. <clears throat> Are you here? <clears throat> You're going to have to have your repository ready. You're going to need to know how to use your faith. 
And if you've been told, I don't need a weapon. I can just go into battle. The Lord's going to fight for me. Hello. Like the guy who's in the middle of a flood. The flood got up to the doorsteps of the house. A boat came by and said, get in. He said, no, I'm believing God. God's going to save me. God's going to deliver me. It moves up the house. He's, he climbs out on the roof of the house. And another boat comes by and says, get in. He said, no, nope, the Lord's going to rescue me. Finally, he gets up so high, he's up on the, on the pitch, the very top pitch of the house. And a helicopter comes by and drops. He says, get on. And he said, nope. The Lord's going to deliver me. Well, finally, he drowns. He gets to heaven and says, Lord, why didn't you deliver me? I sent you two boats and a helicopter. Hello? See, we keep waiting for, you know, to be translocated or something. Thinking that's got, you know, we're going to have some kind of testimony. Hello, folks. I'm not taking any drugs. No drugs will enter my body. I'm the healed of the Lord. You're being silly. And you can lose your toe, your foot, your leg, and die. There's no scripture that says no knife will, not, will touch my body. There's not a scripture that says that. Well, that's my confession. What's it based on? Is there a Bible to base that on? I can have what I say. The Word of God promises that you can have what you say. You can't have my wife. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith Ed. <laughs> I know a pastor, some, some guy in the church was after his wife. He went to the Lord in prayer and said, Lord, it's all right. I got this one. I know it says you, you, you will repay. I got this one. Hello, yeah. you know? No, you can't have anything you say. You can have what the Bible promises you. Amen. Faith does not make silly statements. Faith speaks the word. And we're led by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost may lead you to do certain things. The Holy Ghost can lead you to certain doctors. I don't believe... Using a doctor is a slap in the face of Jesus. Can you imagine having a, a, a doctor on your ministry team? And it's an abomination to you for somebody to be a doctor? These are stupid things we say. I said, these are stupid things we say. And you wonder why people think the charismaniacs are crazy maniacs. Or charismatics are crazy maniacs. We didn't do anything to help our cause with some of the dumb stuff we've done. Y'all hear you going home? Y'all hear you going home? What time is it? Wait, we got started so late. Are y'all here? Are y'all going home? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So what do we do? We run to the rock. We put our faith in Jesus, and then we're led by the Spirit. We speak the word, but he will guide you in what to do during that. Go, go study the life of David. Lord, shall I pursue? And shall we win? Go up and you will win. Now, one day Jehoshaphat was there. And they all battled together because they had all showed up to surround them. And they asked the Lord what to do. He said, you shall not need, and you can't use this on every battle. This was a divine, supernatural direction from the Lord. You will not need to fight. Send out the praises in front of you. And he said ambushments against them. They turned around and killed them, everybody their own self. But you can't use that in every battle. There were other times God directed the people in the Old Testament to go fight. Gideon showed up with 30,000 or 3,000 men. I guess it was a 3,000, 30,000 to start with, or 3,000. Dropped it to 3,000, dropped it to 300. Y'all go home. Everybody that's feeble in your heart, go home. They, about 27,000 packed up, boogied. 
Everybody ever drink water? Everybody that put the face down in water and drank like a dog, send them home. <clears throat> Only 300 people scooped it up and, and watched and drank out of the palm of their hand. That's the ones you're taking. Now, Lord, I was a whole lot more comfortable with 30,000. Just sheer numbers, you get it? Than 300. But see, the Spirit of God will direct you in your battles. But you've got to be running to the rock and putting your faith in the rock and putting your trust in God so that he can direct you in your battle to win. You can't sit back and say, God's got it. Amen. God's going to take care of it. I ain't got to do nothing. No, you're going to have to do your part of living by faith, of following the Holy Ghost. He will guide you. He will direct you. He will give you, he will give you understanding of what to do. And that's the life of faith. <clears throat> faith does what God says do. Amen. When it doesn't understand why you're supposed to do it. Right. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for this time together. Bless the people. We walk in faith in Jesus' name. We win because the greater one's in us. And the word abides in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Remember Jesus said, if my words abide in you, abide in me. If my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done. Notice the prerequisite the to asking what you will is that his words abide in you, and you abide in him. That governs the asking. I said that governs the asking. Y'all here, you go home. Well, it's time to go home. So, praise God. Till we see you again, God bless you. Remember this. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Bless you. Praise God. Amen.